Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sean from Play by Pause, and today we're gonna talk about color. The one thing that always concerns about me when it comes to color is the time that we spend on the color gradings without messing up the footage. When it comes to color grading, it can be very tricky and frustrating because there's no simple solution as using one filter, slap it on top on it, and calling it a day. It requires a lot of try and error and patience, understanding about the color theory and finding a correct balance. In simple terms, it has to look good and feel good. Furthermore, there's no such thing as one size fits all because in the color world, there's variety of color tone and mood. So you have to find the correct color to fit your project or the environment so that you can tell about the storytelling. So today, I'm going to show you a few ways on how I color grade a more cinematic film looks. So let's jump right in. This is definitely the best way to color grade your footage because you have the full control to tweak the look and the style that you want. However, it's not easy to master this skill at all, especially if you're looking for more advanced color grading or create a more cinematic film look. You can learn all the basic color grading from any tutorial, but for you to get better, you require to experience and explore, I would say, the eye of colorist. Before I use DaVinci Resolve, I've been using Premiere Pro for a lot of my color grading work. And I must say, DaVinci Resolve really opens up the limitations because the precisions and sensitivity from this software in terms of color gradings is so powerful and it can really create some amazing results if you know what you're doing and you do it correctly. Me personally, I will go with manual adjustment whenever I can. But for content like YouTube or a run and gun projects, it's hard to manually adjust every footage. So I will only use manual adjustment for projects like a commercial or projects that have more time. Let's talk about LUT. We have heard LUT countlessly and what exactly it is. So to keep it simple, LUT is a transformation of your color input to your desired output or in other words, from one color to another color. For example, certain LUT will give your red to more red or give a green tint to your shadow or grey. Based on my knowledge, initially, LUT is used for a color reference for your display during shoots, but nowadays it has been a very common or fast way to give your final footage a distinct look of white. One good thing about LUT is you can apply the LUT to any software without any to plugin, and you can just download the LUT from any creator that you like and easily apply it. Easy, simple, and fast. However, I encountered some problems with LUTs. I believe some of you share the same sentiments. So what happened is you will find some interesting, good-looking LUTs from some creators after seeing the samples. You are so excited, you download it, purchase it, and by the time you tried it out, most of the time you will feel disappointed with it because it doesn't look like samples. But why? It's simply because the creator who create these LUTs use their own personal camera setting or camera profile. And all camera setting and camera profiles are different. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't use or download any LUTs from the creators. What I'm trying to say is you shouldn't think LUT as a magical filter that makes everything perfect. You should always tweak your footage before applying a LUT or find the correct LUTs that suits your camera setting or camera profile. Generally, I think LUT is an effective way to give your final footage a look or style, but you should always remember to tweak your footage or find the correct LUTs that fits your camera setting or profile. So plug-in. You must be thinking, really, you need a plug-in for a color grading? Yes, actually there's a few plug-in out there that focus in color grading. And recently we got in touch with a company called Dehancer and they asked us to try out their open effects plugin for a film light color grading in DaVinci Resolve. So before we proceed any further, I must clarify that this is completely an honest review, no bias, and anyway, I don't really use plugin for my color grading. So this is kind of my first time using a plugin for color grading. So I use this plugin for my recent project and I must say, I'm really in love with it. I really hope you guys can see my first impressions. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. But I'm so pumped to show you this plugin and let me show you what's inside this plugin. 
First off, in DaVinci Resolve, you have to open a new node and just drag the plugin from your open effects to the new node you created. Then go to input settings and change the source to your camera settings. Currently, they do not have the profile for Sony A7S III, but you can just use A7R 3 because they have the same format, which is s Log 3 Next session is the fun part where you can choose the desired film. So they have tons of film profiles you can choose. I've read through their official website regarding on how they create film profiles and it can be very technical. You may read through the whole process on how to achieve the result, but to keep it short, the Hanser plugin emulates the process and behavior of a real film and gives you a good raw negative look. For this project, I picked up the Progression Gorski 1906 because I like the cool teen kind of look for this car project. In the setting, we have the push or pull. So if you have been into film photography, you might be familiar with this. Basically, it's a film behavior depending on how much light received during exposure. It's not something we used to when it comes to understanding exposure, which is brightness from a digital perspective, but more of a way where film were exposed in the past. Expand tool, which is basically our black and white point. Next is the print tool, which is more into an analog film setting. Toner contrast is like our contrast, and one good thing about this is you can prevent crashing a white and black when you do the contrast adjustment by just turning on the analog range limiter. Next, we have the color head. To keep this simple, think this as a color shifter or tint. When you push the yellow towards blue, means you are getting less yellow and more blue. Something interesting about this color here is the preserved exposure, where you can shift the color and preserve the exposure during color corrections. To me, it gives you a more natural image. Next, Flim Green, which I believe you might already know what it is, so I'm not going to go in depth about it. You can just play around and see the result by yourself. Next are the two big things that I found very interesting, which is the halation and bloom. Let's start with halation. So halation is a reddish glow around high contrast edges. On the modern age, a lot of technology has been trying to avoid these halations, but some filmmakers tend to like this kind of defects because it just gives a film stock look. Personally, I like this feature as it gives me the options to apply onto my project if I ever looking to recreate that distinctive look. As for bloom, it creates a glowing effect at the bright spot in your footage. It also softens the overall footage as the result. Some of you guys might like this kind of effects, but for me, I didn't apply it for this project. So what's the best or effective way to create a cinematic film look for your footage? Now I'm grading same footage with two different methods, one with the Hanser plugin and one other manually. I understand that it might not be a fair comparison since I have graded the footage with the Hanser before, but I'm trying to show you is you can quickly create a film look using plugins if it suits your style or need. If you're not looking for any film look, you should always do it manually or use LUT to achieve the result in a more efficient or faster way. So always ask yourself what look you're trying or hoping to achieve and find the best way to suit you. For our case today, we are absolutely impressed by what the Hanser plugin can achieve. But if I'm not looking for any film look from the Hanser, I'll still stick with a manual adjustment or any LUTs. So that's about it. Hope you guys like this video and special shout out to the Hanser for sponsoring these plugins. If you're interested with the plugin, feel free to check out their link in our description below and try it out yourself. Please share this video or subscribe our channel if you like what we do. And as always, create, learn, and have fun. And I'll see you guys in the next video.